Hi guys, so earlier this year, I pretty publicly lost my job as a teacher because of uh, what I call sort of a viral oopsies. <laughs> Uh, basically, it was a series of TikToks that actually got me banned on that platform as well, if you can believe that. Um, so my contract was terminated in the middle of the school year, which is very bad. Um, and if, if you get fired for what I was fired for, and I'm not saying that I did what I was fired for, but, but if that happens to you, that's pretty much a scarlet letter ensuring that you'll never teach again. And if you're a former student of mine... Yes, I'm referencing the Scarlet Letter. <laughs> you guys got out of that pop quiz. So uh, so you lucked out big time. Um, but people keep asking me about this incident. I sort of, for the past four or five months or so, I've been trying to move on. Um, but it keeps coming in my email, you know, my cameo requests. I get a lot of cameo requests of people talking about it. And I realize that I don't think I've ever publicly told the story of what happened from my perspective. I think people saw sort of out of context things unfold, but a lot of times what happens on social media is people will see those sorts of things and they sort of will build a narrative in their own head that that is what they think happened. And a lot of times that narrative is sort of them bringing their own baggage to it and um, inventing a person and a story in their own head that didn't really happen. So anyway, that's all to say, I want to take this video to explain what happened from my side of the story. And you're going to notice that at no point in this video am I going to clarify um, the age of the student that the situation happened with, nor the age of the students that I teach generally. And I'm doing that very purposefully because... I don't think that that should matter. That's sort of my whole thesis statement here. I don't think that if the student was underage or if the student was of legal age, that would not have any bearing. Basically, it would have been, it would not have been wrong no matter what age the student was. And so that if there's anything that I want you people to take away from this, it's that it's that which is basically that people online sort of have a way of, of, of it, it became sort of a witch hunt. Um, so most of you may remember a video where I said, my students are all morons. That sort of became a meme, um, and a lot of people, probably a lot of people know that video from seeing me, I was right here in this car, um, I had a very, 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 very long, stressful day. Being a teacher is very, very hard. Um, now, what I should have done is recorded that video, deleted it, put my phone in my pocket, and drove home and had a nice glass of scotch, right? And I did do that, but, uh, but, but, uh, but I didn't do that. I had the glass of scotch, but I posted the video onto TikTok and Instagram Reels. Um, and I think the reason, why, people have asked me, why did you do that? And I think that, you know, I'm just gonna be honest, I do like attention, you know? Um, and I think that there's a lot, I, I, sort of, I always feel like a lot of the other teachers think that I'm kind of unstable. They sort of, they, they, they don't, the teachers at that school, I didn't have a lot of camaraderie with because, okay, I'm sorry, I, somebody's, sorry, okay, nope, sorry, <laughs> um, I've had a little bit of issues with, uh, with, um, with, uh, uh, anger and rage, so I've been sort of trying to get that under control. I think that people don't really understand how much it affects your life when sort of the entire public decides collectively that you're a bad person. You know, that really messes, that, that is, that my therapist has explained to me, that is trauma. You can have PTSD from a situation like that. PTSD doesn't have to be always, you know, you got blown up in Iraq or something. It can be, it can be, a, it can be from your interpersonal life, you know? So, um, okay. So I posted that video, which was the, my students are all morons. And, um, and at first I will say it did not, I, I think if it had stopped there, 
I would have been fine. Because that was sort of just like a, oh, funny, goofy thing. I mean, I remember coming into school the next day and um, and uh, my homeroom was all sort of, you know, buzzing around like like a, like a, like a wasp's nest because all the kids were like, oh my gosh, Mr. Anchel, you know, did you see that, did you see that your video and, and uh, yeah, uh, your viral and, uh, you know, um, and, um, and that was cool. I mean, I don't know. It's, 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 I think that, that the big, the big thing about teaching the age of this, the, the age group of students that I teach is that you, you, you know, you sort of want to be cool. And if you're not cool in the eyes of the students, then they're going to relentlessly make fun of you. And that, it can, you know, I mean, so I always kind of prided myself on being a cool teacher. You know, I, I was on TikTok and uh, I was funny and, you know, I cracked little jokes and, um, and I was accepted by the population of students, which really made me feel good. And so there was another angle of this, which was, which was that sort of, um, I was trying to bring a new age kind of philosophy to teaching, which is that the teaching doesn't end in the classroom. The teaching extends onto social media and it extends, you know, uh, I mean, these days, uh, people who are the age of the students that I taught spend their whole lives on social media pretty much. You know, I mean, they spend their whole time in the classroom on social media, even though it's not allowed. Um, and so I think that that can be an under, I think we have to think about how do we how do we bring teaching into the 21st century? And so that was sort of my TikTok strategy. That's why I became sort of a TikTok teacher, because I figured if, if students saw me on TikTok, I could reach them in a way that they normally would not be reached, that, that they normally would not, I could, I could, I could switch the word I'm looking for here. I could access them in a way that they, that they were not, that, that other teachers typically wouldn't because I was in their pocket or I was in their phone. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, uh, and for, I think that really worked for a while because, because after that first video, you know, my students are all morons, you know, that one. Um, and then somebody draws Walter White on me or something, you know. Um, all of a sudden, everybody at the school was like, oh my gosh, uh, uh, I, I, I need to have Mr. Henschel's class. I, we're going into Mr. Henschel's class. I was sort of like, uh, a lot of, a lot of the kids made me, made a screenshot of me from that video as their background on their phone, you know, and, and I was kind of a celebrity, you know, at the school, which was, which was really cool, you know, and, and that's sort of every teacher's dream. I mean, the old heads you know, we'll sort of tell you, well, you, you're not supposed to be best friends with the students. You're supposed to lay down the law and you're supposed to teach the student. The students don't want a friend. They want, they need somebody who's going to kind of, you know, uh, lay down the law because of the student. Basically, a lot of the old, older teachers, their philosophy is, you know, hit them with a ruler. No, actually, obviously, but you know, that, that it's, it's old school, basically. But I approach it from a completely different perspective. And I think that the students were actually a lot more receptive to, um, to, to what I was trying to do to them or to what, the way, how I was trying to, the, the, so like, for instance, in English class, you know, I was teaching them about, um, I think we were doing Wuthering Heights at that point. And so, uh, so I was like, uh, yeah, you know, uh, that it's, this is kind of like when you're on social media and your ex doesn't text you back or something. Can I be honest with you? I've never read Wuthering Heights. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, all the students, you know, I always get would rag on the students for not reading the books, but I haven't read those books. You know, I mean, I, 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 I watch the movie. I look it up on Wikipedia, but, but I have the answer key, so I don't have to read the book. You know, um, and uh, for the short answers, I always like the short answers because because uh, um, basically I a anyway. Um, uh, I the, uh, like I said, the administration was not happy. You know, the principal who I thought I was friendly with brought me into her office and, you know, was that sort of wanted to talk to me about the video. And and, uh, and she said, you know, you, uh, you really should not be, I should fire you for this. I could, basically, was what she said. This was the next day. 
very next day. Um, but the reason I'm not going to is because I know you and I know what a, what a good teacher you are. I know how much the students like you. I know how much you care about this school. And I know that what you said, because technically in the video, I said that all my students were stupid and that they're, and that they didn't know how to read. And I hate it. Really? I think that, that, that people misunderstood that video because it was, it was anger directed at the teach or the parents, you know, I would never direct that sort of anger to the students ever. That anger was was because I had been doing teacher or parent meetings all day, you know, and um, getting getting on Zoom with the parents. And the parents are so entitled, especially here in California, in LA. You know, all this all the parents are like, well, you know, my my uh, my husband um, is a is a is the production designer on uh, you know everybody loves Raymond. So 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 that means our our kid is automatically a genius, you know. Um, and it's true that some students are smarter than others, but, 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 but you have to sort of, you teaching doesn't stop in the classroom. Well, my whole philosophy, the parents have to continue the teaching outside of the classroom in the home. Cause I can't go into your house. Certainly not now. <laughs> um, so, so you have to sort of be my, um, my ombudsman, if you will. And a lot of parents don't want to do that. And they blame their failings and their insecurities on me, which is completely unfair. So that's where a lot of the anger in the My Students and Morons video was from. Um, and in the, in the, there was another video where I said that I was a bad teacher, I expressed sort of some insecurity. And like I said, those ones were sort of more about me venting things that I think every teacher could understand. I got a lot of comments from teachers, none of the teachers at my school thought I was bad. They, they all think that I'm a weirdo, you know, but, but all, a bunch of other teachers who were in the area or uh, on social media would sort of comment and say, oh my gosh, this, you know, I feel the exact same way and you're brilliant. And, and I was like, yeah, you know, I mean, I, that, the, tell, the, tell, tell the other people that at the school, you know, <laughs> tell them I'm brilliant when I can't the, get the Dr. Pepper out of the vending machine and it won't give me my Dr. Pepper, right? Even though I, even though I put in the right amount of money. Um, so anyway, so I guess that I got a little bit of a big head, you know, because uh, the principal had basically sort of told me to stop with the social media and I should have stopped. I will admit that, but it felt good. You know, the attention, I mean, you when you, uh, being a teacher is a very thankless job. You know, you teach all day long in a hot, sweaty classroom that doesn't have air conditioning. The students don't give a shit about what you're saying. The students don't want to do any of the work, you know. So it's a, you come home every day and you're like, what the hell did I even accomplish today? Everybody hates me. I'm not helping these kids at all. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the worst thing about their lives. And it's, it's, you, get, you get insecure. So... Getting validation from social media feels good. I mean, why does anybody post on social media? You know that feeling you get when you when you post a banger, you know, and you get all the likes. That's how I felt when I when I was making viral TikToks. Um, it felt good. So I couldn't stop. And I realize now what I've discussed in therapy since this incident is that it is an addiction. Like any other addictive drug, social media is an addiction. So I could not put it down. And I didn't think I was addicted because, you know, I mean, I, you, you think that addictions are like the crack hoes that are on the street here, out here in L.A. You don't think I'm addicted. You, know, you know, you don't think I can be addicted to my phone, but, it, but it's very true. Um, and like any addict, I thought that I was managing it. And I was. I was functional. When you have an addiction... If you have a loved one who's addicted to something or you have a friend and you, and you just can't seem to get through to them, you have to understand the very sad reality that they are never going to understand the depth of their problem until they are forcibly plummeted to the rock bottom. That's why they call it rock bottom. Because once you get to that floor, then you look around you and you see, oh my gosh, I have lost everything. This addiction has ruined my life. 
Now, there's no way to go but up. Some people are lucky enough to catch their addiction before they get all the way to the ground, but I was not. So, I continued posting. And it was mostly pretty innocuous things, you know, so I, uh, I deleted most of them, you know, because the social media manager in me um, sort of goes with what I call sort of a buckshot approach where you post a bunch of different stuff and then you see which does the best and then you remove all the other things. So, um, I one night... And this is the part of the story where I should also clarify that TikTok, I think, played a role here in the things that happened in real life with regards to the fallout and me losing my job. But I don't think that... Basically, the question is, would I still have gotten fired if TikTok was not there at all? And I don't know the answer to that. That's a very good question. I think the big problem in my case was that there was something going on in real life as well. And the social media was sort of the catalyst for it. So one night I posted a video that was sort of me. I was just standing there and I was smiling and the, and the, and the caption of the video, the text on the screen said, um, uh, Every teacher has one student who gives you butterflies when they walk into class or something like that. That's the biggest thing that I remember is the butterflies line. Because I understand now that the connotations of that, especially for the younger generation, I think for my old guy generation, it's a little different. But for the young kids, that connotation is primarily not innocent. You know, that it sort of evokes. I'm trying to be very careful how I explain this because I don't want to get deplatformed on YouTube again now. Um, people are very touchy about this sort of stuff, especially these days. I think that that uh, verbiage is not. It didn't come out. Basically, the way that I meant it was I. It's very hard when you're a teacher because you're a human being. You know, and you, the students, sort of are usually the only people that you hang around all day. You know, if you're married, I'm not married, so I don't have anybody to come home to. I come home to an empty house, my dog. Um, the students are the only people who I talk to throughout the day. They're my only social circle, right? The other teachers don't like me. I don't talk to them. So they become your friends. And it's hard not to because at the age that I teach, the, 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 the many of them are basically adults, you know? And so I'm not that old. I mean, I remember back when I was their age like it was yesterday, whatever their age may have been, right? Um, and... I, that was not a fun time of my life. The whole reason why I decided to become a teacher was because I think I had some sort of subconscious desire to go back in time and fix that time of my life for myself, you know, and that's impossible. But the easiest way that I can do that is to um, fix it for other people, you know, and B, I can sort of time travel and intervene in my own life by proxy, by interfering and being a good role model for students who are currently going through what I was going through at that time. Um, so, you know, it sort of becomes an issue when, what do you do when, I always wonder, would I have been friends with my students when I was their age? You know, if I, if, if that age me started to, if, if that age me was plucked into the, the school that I teach at, where would he have fit in on the social hierarchy? Because I see all the little clicks and, you know, all the friendships and all the, all the pockets, you know, um, I think I have a pretty good guess. And honestly, that is, those are the students that typically are my friends. You know, I mean, I am, in addition to being an English teacher, I am 
a cor the chorus director and I'm sort of the music director, which is so funny. I was never really into the music that much, but, but you know, if they, if they, <laughs> in the school, if they have anybody who's a remotely artistically inclined in any way, then, then they just show up, you know, here, you can do the plays and you can do the trombone and the band and the, all this stuff. You, you handle that. Um, so I had to do all that stuff. So I serve a very important function for students who are outcasts in society and for students who don't feel like they have a place to fit in because typically students who, who, who are in band and they're in the arts and they're in the theater, they are there because they have nowhere else to go. And that's not easy. You know, it sort of becomes a lighthouse for them. And I take that very, very, very seriously. So I try to create an atmosphere where the students can feel safe and they can feel like they are in a safe place with a friend. You know, they, I don't want them to feel like they're, they're with their math teacher who's giving them an F um, and uh, who's saying you're stupid and pay attention to algebra and all this stuff. I want them to feel like I can trust this person. I am safe with this person. And this person is creating an atmosphere where I feel safe. That is my only goal. And if I didn't do that, that's awful. And I will never live that down for the rest of my life if that's what happened. But I do not think that that is what happened. So having said that, there are a lot of students who sort of um, typically you go eat lunch in the cafeteria, right? But there are a lot of students who instead will come eat their lunch in my classroom because you know, I'll just say it. They're, they're sort of dorks. And I was a dork too at that age. Um, <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, people who are dorks typically grow up to be the most successful, cool people in adulthood because they at a young age learned that, that society, the, the mechanisms of society did not reward them simply for existing if that makes sense, like it did for the cool popular kids. So they learn at a young age, I have to forge my own path because the path that has been laid out for me doesn't work and I don't like it. And that ultimately makes you a very, very successful adult. So there's a bunch of kids who's come eat lunch in my room and I work and stuff and, you know, and they all talk so much themselves, but because I create a safe atmosphere for them, they, you know, they feel like they don't have to eat lunch in the cafeteria. They can just sort of, uh, they, 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 they can come eat lunch in my room and it's fine. I'm technically not supposed to do that. But it's one of those things where I have told, you know, sometimes if, if there's a problem with one of these parents, which is always what happens, then... You know, it'll get passed down to me. You know, a parent maybe emails the principal and the principal comes to me and says, hey, you got to tell students that they can't hang out in your, home, in your classroom anymore. And I'm like, fine. So I tell all the kids, hey, listen, you got to cool it for a little while. Go eat lunch in the cafeteria at least till this all blows over. I don't say that. But, but you know, typically what happens is I say, okay, cool it. Go to the cafeteria. And then, um, and then they always end up wandering back in after several months, you know. Um... So, like I said, these students, I care about these students a lot. I consider the students my friends in a way, you know. And there are a lot of students who particularly for when it comes to marching band and the theater and all that, a lot of that occurs outside of the, the, uh, outside of the operating hours of the school. So we rehearse after school, our shows are on the weekend, and we have to do a lot of coordinating at times when people are not in school. So a few of the students who are in leadership positions have my phone number and I have their phone number so that I can text them and coordinate things for, you know, are you going to bring the, the, the trombone or should I bring it or, or make sure that, you know, you tell all the kids that they have to be at the bus or whatever, you know. Um, so I think that Again, I don't think that that's inherently wrong. I don't think that it's inherently wrong to have a student's phone number. You know, I mean, you can agree to disagree. I think it's it's just one of those things where it opens up a door for somebody to to interpret it in bad faith, right? 
basically the what sunk me was a text that I didn't even remember sending. I didn't even, they said this was a text from, you know, uh, uh, October 2021 or something. And I was like, okay, how am, I, how am I supposed to remember that? I texted a student and I said the words, I love you. Now, it was not in a, I, when I read the conversation, they very conveniently only cut out that little excerpt of my bubble that said, I love you, with a, with a rolly, smiley face, smiley face that's rolling around or something. Um, they very con conveniently left out the context for the rest of the conversation. Um, because what had happened was I went and looked it up myself afterwards. And the student had said a joke. They had said something funny. And I said, ha, 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 I love you, you know? That was funny. And it's true. I do love my students. Of course I love my students. I, I, how, how am I supposed to do this job if I can't love my students? Love is not, love is it's not, uh, you know, th 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 there's more than one type of love, right? I mean, you cannot honestly sit here and tell me that you don't love most of the people in your life in a way that, that it does not mean that you're, the, you know, a seedy person or that you're, you have any ulterior motives. Yeah, I love my students. And that's one of the reasons why I will always defend myself and I will go to bat for myself because it's not wrong to love your students. That's not wrong. If I don't love my students, then I become one of those teachers who tells them you're a failure. You'll never achieve anything because I don't see you as a person. I see you as a cog in the machine who needs to get a test score, who needs to go into college. And I don't give a shit about you. My teachers didn't love me. My teachers get that my teachers would fail me because they thought it was funny. So yeah, I love my students, and I'm sorry about that. I'm so sorry because. Apparently, that's over the line for these parents these days who are not willing to understand the complexities and the nuances of human behavior and human relationships. So, I remember how I mentioned that that text occurred several years ago. So put, that, put a pin in that and put that in the background because we're going to come back to it later. That's going to be on the quiz. <laughs> um, so... TikTok, this, this, about February of this year, I was continuing to post on TikTok, which was a mistake, um, and I posted a video. I, I told you about the butterflies thing. I think that's where, I'm sorry, I, I got lost track of where I was. We kind of winded around. This is what happens in my, in my classroom, too. Whenever I give a lecture on something, I can't seem to, you know, stay on track. Uh, but the students like that. They always tell me that they love that they love my little tangents, you know, and they love that I sort of wander around in my own head and then uh, with the, the, way, the way that I explain things. So, um, so that screenshot, I could tell right away that that was going to get out of hand. And the mistake that I made was not just deleting it. Well, the first mistake that I made was posting in the first place. The second mistake was not deleting it. I kept it up because I dug my heels in the sand and I wanted to say no. Because here's the thing. As a teacher, I have spent this entire... We're in sort of a culture war moment right now where we are crucifying teachers because we... Well, not we. There's a very specific group of people who is trying to crucify teachers because they are projecting their own issues and whatever they have going on onto the teacher because they want to keep their, their kids in their bubble. Parents cannot relinquish their child into the real world because the real world is going to tell them that the parent failed and the parent is wrong so the parents cannot let that happen 
they must protect that child, whatever the cost. Any teacher who wants to give that student some independence and any teacher who wants to show that student that there is more to life than what your teeny, tiny brained, closed minded parent showed you, they can't have that. And unfortunately, teachers are, when a, when a, when a student is growing up, teachers are typically the only alternative voice that they hear. That's not, that's not their parents. That's not the other kids in the community who all have the same types of parents. It's the teachers. We have their ear in a way that, that nobody else does in their life. And they have to listen to us. So anyway, so I posted that screenshot and I got a bunch of messages that were like, um, excuse me, you know, and everybody was saying that I was a creep and a pervert. And I wanted to show people that that was not the case. I wanted to, to explain myself. And I thought that if I doubled down, you know, and I, and I elaborated, that would show people, I made the mistake of thinking that people would hear me out and that people would make an effort to understand my perspective, that I could teach them something. Typically, when you show people an alternative perspective, they empathize with you. They empathize with that person's perspective and they use that to inform a new understanding that they have about humanity and about their own humanity. That doesn't happen anymore. And I don't know whether that's because of the internet or the news or whatever is fra I've talked about this on this channel before. The, the, we have so many intermediaries between us and another, our connections with our fellow human beings are intercepted by things on social media, culture wars, the news, all this stuff. So we can't get that direct line to other people anymore. It stops in the middle and then it a bing bong, bing bong, bing bongs all around into weirdo land. And that's how you get all these weird, bigoted, crazy perspectives. And it really, that's a mirror. You know, the person's bing bong, bing bong, all around their own reflective surface. Anyway, this is getting off the rails. Basically, I doubled down and I made a longer video uh, where I explained every teacher has that one student who gives them butterflies, you know, who makes them sort of, sort of, sort of, um, um, and it's true. That's, I think, what a lot of people didn't like. It is true that every teacher has a favorite student. And not fair, I shouldn't say a favorite, but a, every teacher encounters a student at some point in their teaching career. We always make a joke that it's sort of like we all have, there's always that one student. Like I said in the video, you're going to be the one, you know? I always think to myself when I, and I meet the one who I think may, might be the one at the beginning of the year. And I'm like, oh, maybe this is it. And then it's not. Um, and so basically that's because when a teacher sees a student who they see themselves in, I met a student who I, who was me at that age, basically, and who was going to be my opportunity to fix the damage that had been done unto me at their age. That was my opportunity. That's why I said every teacher has that one student because remember how earlier I said every teacher goes into teaching because they want to heal the own damage of their past? Here's the chance that I get. It's like my one shot into the alternate dimension where I turned out okay, you know? Um, so I posted the video and it was quiet at first, you know, the, 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 typically those things tend to, tend to snowball and it did snowball. And what happened was it got the ear of the, the parent of the student who I had sent the, I love you text to several years ago. 
that was not the student I was even talking about. Okay? And I wanted so bad to tell that mother, hey, don't flatter yourself. <laughs> you know, even if I even, even if I was doing something inappropriate, I would not pick that kid. Sorry, that was a little inappropriate. Um, but 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 basically, um I don't know how I'm wondering if maybe she sort of had that ready to go. A lot of parents do not like me in this district because I show the students an alternative perspective. It's exactly like I explained before. So people had me locked and loaded for years. Everybody was sort of waiting for an opportunity, you know, get the big city guy out, put in another uh, barnyard uh, farmer Joe in there to tell my kid that, that uh, they need to be normal. So I have a feeling that she had that 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 ready to go, and once all this social media escalated, um, that was her chance, and it worked because I got called into the the principal's office, um, and she said that the uh, um, superintendent and all of them they had discussed the situation, which I think was BS because it had only been a couple of days. You know, um, but they said we discussed the situation, and we think because of your your online conduct, in conjunction with your with your conduct in the in the classroom, um, we we there, we don't really have a choice but to terminate your contract in the middle of the school year, which is not good for the students. You know, because then all of a sudden another teacher has to come in in the middle of February and do, do everything different. So they don't care what's best for the students. What, what would have been best, I would have understood if they said finish out the year and then and then go somewhere else. And that's what I thought. I always thought that, again, I don't have any friends at that school who are adults. Not that the students aren't adults. But you just would have thought you just you you like to think that if you know someone for a long time and if you've worked somewhere for a long time that they are going to have your back in a situation like this and they did not. They fed me to the dogs because they wanted to make an example out of me because of cancel culture and because of, you know, because because the mob needs to be happy. They need to I need to get fired. So that they can all say, okay, they took a concrete action. They fired that teacher. So anyway, they said, get out of here in the middle of the year. Immediately stop. You cannot even go back to your classroom right now. You can come back at a time that we set up to get your things. And the students were devastated. Because for many of the students there, I was the only, their only hope. Or, yes, I was their only hope. Now they all have to go back into that cafeteria. And they have to sit with all these other students that make fun of them and judge them and bully them. Because that's what their parents taught them to do. They have to go back into the world that rejected them. And they have to go back into that box that the parents are trying to keep them in, that the world is trying to keep them in, so that they do not get smart enough to realize, actually, I'm better than this. I'm better than you. I can be my own person, and that's fine. So they won in that regard. It was like a double one-two punch. Not only did I get fired from the school, I got banned on TikTok. Because I think it was the exact same reason. I think somebody on TikTok, because I got the, all three of the, it was three videos or whatever it was, got taken down for community guidelines violations. And I appealed all of them and they were restored, which means they were put back. And they said, we are sorry for the inconvenience. These did not violate the community guidelines. Actually, you, we were wrong. Here you go. Restored. Content restored. Then, so I thought I, uh, so I thought I was out of the woods. A couple days later, I'm literally in the middle of filming another video 
I had already gotten fired at this point. And I, all of a sudden my app glitched out and I couldn't log in. And then when I tried to re-download the app and log in again, a little box came up and said, your account is permanently suspended. I emailed them. I called them. I've submitted a legal uh, report. They said, your content violated the Youth Safety Act or whatever the hell. And that's where my whole thesis comes into of they made the leap in logic to assume not only that the student was underage, but that I was even talking about the student in a romantic sense at all. There's nothing. Go back. Go back and find all those videos. Find me. I challenge you to find me any, any proof in the video that there was any romantic undercurrent and that there was the student was underage. If you can find me those two things, I will make another video where I say I am wrong. But I know I won't have to because that was not what happened. And that's not anywhere in there. So anyway, I'm sure this was a very long video and I apologize, but but it's just not what you think. And we are not going to, If I feel so scared because I feel like our society is getting smaller and smaller and smaller minded. I feel like we're regressing. And I don't understand why that is. Part of me wants to be optimistic and say that's because that's because we are actually on the verge of making real progress. And so these are the last dying whimpers of a of an of a backward society as we crush them under the heel of our boot. But I don't know. I hope that's the case. I don't know. So good luck out there. Because I can't help you anymore. I tried. I tried.